Over the last 10 years, the Department of Radiology at the University of Florida College of Medicine has conducted a simulation-based evaluation of radiology resident competence in critical care imaging. 127 residents interpreted this case of discitis osteomyelitis as one of 65 cases during an 8-hour simulated on-call shift with a median score of 0 out of 10 and an overall average score of 0.46 out of 10. Overall, the average number of points lost out of 10 to observational discipline was 8.92. At the same time, 0.62 points were lost due to interpretive errors on the part of the residents. We define an effective report to be one which achieves scores between 7 and 10. In terms of letter grades, this would be an A or a B. In this most missed case, 2% of residents produced effective reports. We define a report having a critical error to be one with scores between 0 and 2. In terms of letter grades, this would be an F or a D. In this most missed case, 90% of residents produce reports with critical errors. In this case, we have a patient with back pain, and we have AP and lateral views of the lumbar spine. In these cases, it's always nice to know where the back pain is, if it's all the way low down, lumbosacral region, or higher up, low thoracic. Um, but we rarely get this information. If we look at the alignment, it's not bad in the lumbar spine. Maybe there's a little bit of kyphosis up at the thoracolumbar junction. But when we look, there's some degenerative changes at L5-S1, little disc narrowing, little disc disease at L4-5 with end plate changes and interlateral ossophyte formation. So, you know, this might all be causing some back pain. Um, other things we always have to look at are the pedicles. Make sure we don't have any sclerotic or destroyed pedicles. These all look okay. There's some bowel gas overlying this one. We look at the spinous processes that we can see them all. And then we also have to look at the end plates. Here we have some end plate sclerosis, but we can see, depending on how obliqued we are, either one line or two lines from the front and the back of the vertebral bodies, indicating the superior end plates, but at T12L1, we really lose it. This is a subtle finding. Um, but the next thing we've got to look at is the soft tissues. And we have the psoas muscles coming down, and that gives us kind of this triangular appearance. But in this case, we have an extra soft tissue density that doesn't belong, and it's kind of centered on this T11-12, T12L1 end plate abnormality. If we look at the lateral 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 12, it's right at this level, kind of hard to tell on plane films, but see how we see the nice end plates above and below, and then they're just gone at that level. Sometimes if you invert the image, you can see that better. In this case, it's a little bit subtle, so it's hard to tell. But the soft tissue abnormality and the loss of the end plates suggests that this could be an infectious process such as discitis and osteomyelitis with an abscess. Uh, the, fe the history would be nice if there's fever and severe pain. But uh, in this case, we need to get more imaging. So MRI is probably the best way to go. And this needs to be called into the emergency department and it's a priority acuity rank three.